Good afternoon. Welcome to St. Mary's. Please stand and welcome Father Dan with the opening hymn and the word and song, number 502. Alleluia, alleluia, let the holy anthem rise, number 502. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace and peace of God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Certainly welcome to all as we gather for, for Mass this evening. We um, hear today the Jesus, another resurrection appearance, Jesus appearing to the apostles on the, on the lake. So we come seeking to um, be aware and, and recognize Jesus present to us. We prepare for these sacred mysteries by calling to mind our sin. We ask God for forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Give you thanks for your great glory. 
let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the captain and the court officers had brought the apostles in and made them stand before the Sanhedrin, the high priest questioned them. We gave you strict orders, did we not, to stop teaching in that name? Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and went to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles said in reply, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus, though you had him killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to grant Israel repentance and forgiveness of sins. We are witnesses of these things, as is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. The Sanhedrin ordered the apostles to stop speaking in the name of Jesus and dismissed them. So they left the presence of the Sanhedrin, rejoicing that they had been found worthy to suffer the dishonor for the sake of the name. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, looked and heard the voices of many angels who surrounded the throne and the living creatures and the elders. They were countless in number, and they cried out in a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches, wisdom and strength, honor and glory and blessing. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea, everything in the universe, cry out. To the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honor, glory and might forever and ever. The four living creatures answered, Amen, and the elders fell down and worshipped. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus revealed himself again to his disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. He revealed himself in this way. Together were Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, Zebedee's sons, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We also will come with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. When it was already dawn, Jesus standing on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, have you caught anything to eat? They answered him, No. So he said to them, Cast the net over the right side of the boat, and you will find something. So they cast it and were not able to pull it in because of the number of fish. So the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he tucked in his garment, for he was lightly clad and jumped into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat, for they were not far from shore, only about a hundred yards, dragging the net with the fish. When they climbed out on shore, they saw a charcoal fire with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you just caught. So Simon Peter went over and dragged the net ashore full of 153 large fish. Even though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come, have breakfast. And none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they realized it was the Lord. Jesus came over and took the bread and gave it to them, and in like manner the fish. This was now the third time Jesus was revealed to his disciples after being raised from the dead. And when they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. He then said to Simon Peter a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. Jesus said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? 
Peter was distressed that Jesus had said to him a third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Amen, amen, I say to you, when you were younger, you used to dress yourself and go where you wanted. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. He said this signifying by what kind of death he would glorify God. And when he had said this, he said to him, follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You will notice at the end of the pews, the um, nomination forms. So it's that time of year where we seek um, names of potential people to be considered for the um, parish council. So if you would, um, you can take that. um, If you know of some names you want to write in, or you can take that with you, pray about it. Um, return that back here um, in the next week or so. Thank you. And certainly today we also um, offer special prayers for the high school. Um, Edgerton Prom is going on, so we pray in all the excitement and joy and just uh, safety and and all of that for the kids and maybe for the parents and the chaperones. I was talking to one last night where it's like, you know, the after prom goes till like three or four in the morning. So maybe they're the ones who need our prayers, right? But so, so certainly we pray just the blessedness of this night for them and, and, and wisdom and safety. And as we look at the readings today, they, they continue the celebration of Easter. And in the biblical accounts for today, we hear stories about perseverance. So the Acts of the Apostles, they continue to persevere in proclaiming the news that Jesus has risen, even in the threat of being put in prison and flogged and beaten. It's like they, they even rejoice in that because somehow they're persecuted as they proclaim this news that Jesus was risen. We see in Revelation kind of a glimpse of heaven describes Jesus as the lamb to to whom all creatures, all, 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 all of creation bows down in worship. And we hear the gospel account where Jesus appears to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. This gospel from John is one of my favorite all time gospels. It contains so many details and important aspects about the faith of the early disciples, especially Simon Peter, and I think offers many messages for us that we could be here for hours, you know, not exhaust all of the detail and what's contained in this. I I know you don't want to be here for hours, so allow me to just to touch on a few aspects of, of this gospel. So first we hear about that temptation to, um, to, to abandon faith. You know, so, so um, we know of the disciples that um, Jesus had, had taught them and, 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 and that, that they um, accompanied him in many ways. But then after he w- was crucified and died on the cross and put in the tomb, then they're not sure, not sure about, you know, what this means. Or, so we hear they want to, like Simon Peter says, well, I'm going to go fishing. And you remember how when they were called, many more fishermen. So sometimes we know about just those things that we want to change and keep working on and, you know, trying to grow and get better. And, and, and even our faith, at times it's not easy. You know, and we can be tempted to say, gee, it might be just easier to go along with the ways of the world and, you know, back to kind of what was, was comfortable and, you know, the, the heck with that trying to improve or get better or embrace God. So, so we hear that so, so very clearly. Um, they're tempted to leave behind what they had learned from Jesus and go back to what was familiar to them, the fishing. Um, Secondly, we hear about kind of the new things that are offered in God. So um, as as, as that that, uh, gospel passage unfolds, we hear about that they went fishing at night and they caught nothing. But then it goes on saying, but when it was dawn. So this makes us think of kind of those new beginnings, those new opportunities, that new day. Maybe even, you know, clear back to the beginning of creation, you know, on the first day when God created light and darkness and, you know, so just that kind of refreshing newness uh, that each day we're given a, a new gift, a new opportunity to hopefully see Christ and experience him. So we hear about that. So, you know, when, when it was dawn, Jesus was there and appeared on, on the shore. And then he offers instructions to the disciples about casting their nets off of the right side of the boat. 
Simple, simple detail here suggests that Jesus is still acting like their teacher, trying to get them to understand greater things. So Jesus begins by addressing them as children. So that clearly doesn't speak about their chronological age. They're all grown men. You know, but so, so speaking about maybe their path or their journey of faith, that they're still like children and need teaching and, and inspiration and ways to grow. And that's like us, right? We never fully know everything about our faith or about God. Um, and so we, we need to continue to be open to those insp that inspiration that comes to us in so many ways. And then we hear as the disciples listen to Jesus, so they actually do it. It's like they've been fishing all night and caught nothing. But as they actually listen to Jesus, they catch so many fish, they can hardly pull them in. You know, and I think that also says of just to us that importance about trying to continually be open to listening to Jesus. That um, as we do that, that doesn't mean our life will be easy, that, you know, everything will go always the way we want it to or think it should. But that, but that certainly when we listen to Jesus, we can be assured of his abundant grace and inspiration and blessing that helps us to maybe, once again, not always be, be, be madly successful in the ways of the world, but it sure will help us to continue to embrace God and those things of faith and all that that, that offers us. So that, that importance of listening to Jesus. And then we hear that, you know, the other, so, so Simon Peter, so he's like so eager to get to Jesus where he jumps out of the boat. It's like, you know, he wants to, you know, it's like he can't wait. It's like he wants to somehow be reunited or, or be close to Jesus. Um, and, and, and then we hear about the other disciples that they come ashore pulling the net with, and just the, the detail, even the 153 large fish. Now, you know, is that just an insignificant detail about, okay, they caught a lot of fish. But many commentators suggest in that, that in, at that time, it seemed that there were like 153 nations. So somehow symbolically that would speak about every nation, all of creation somehow being called to redemption in Christ. And that the net doesn't, doesn't burst, so that means that somehow there's room for everybody. You know, that somehow we're called to the redemption in Christ. And then Jesus invites the disciples to bring some of the fish that they just caught and to join him at the fire where he already had fish and bread. And this mention of a meal, and especially of the bread, reminds us of another scene in the gospel where Jesus feeds the crowd of people, um, uh, the, the people of the multitude, with a few loaves and fish. And it reminds us of the Last Supper that Jesus had with his disciples when he took bread, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, take and eat, this is my body. And then finally, we hear Jesus question Peter three times, saying, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Now, there's only one other time in the Bible that makes reference to a charcoal fire. Do you remember? Do you know what that is? It was in Caiaphas's courtyard when Jesus was being interrogated, and it was at that charcoal fire that Peter was there and denied three times that he knew Jesus. So once again, it's, I don't think it's a coincidence that Jesus is there by a charcoal fire and three times asked Simon Peter, do you love me? And, 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 and so, so clearly that speaks about a, an opportunity for him to be reconciled, to be at peace with, with Jesus, with God, and to hear again that invitation to tend the sheep, you know, to feed, feed the sheep, to care for, for God's flock. So in a couple broad strokes, uh, allow me to also mention a couple other, other ways that I think this gospel certainly speaks to me and I, I, and I, and I hope and I think for all of us. So, so that it is not always easy to live our Christian life. And at times we deny Christ in one way or another, like Peter. We want to remain committed to him. We want to follow the commandments and remain faithful to Jesus. But due to temptations, human weaknesses, and just trials and sin, we do not always do this. This passage invites us over and over to constantly strive to pay attention to the ways that Jesus is revealed to us. We likely will not see him on the shore of some lake as we're out there fishing, you know, but, but, but there, if, if we look for moments of grace and inspiration, we will recognize that Jesus is revealed and made present and known to us. Like Simon Peter and the other disciples, we also need to constantly make efforts to listen to Jesus. 
A firm faith will not take away every trial or challenge that we face. The early disciples certainly experienced the, those many trials as they were persecuted and rejected for proclaiming Jesus. But we can be certain that we will experience abundant blessings in our lives when we listen to Jesus. And another important point that is made to us in these resurrection appearances is that Jesus is made known to them in the breaking of the bread. And from the earliest days of Christian Christianity, a very real way that Jesus was um, made known was in that breaking of bread and the sharing of what became known in the church as the Eucharist. And we still can, you know, if we maybe sometimes it takes a uh, refresher, you know. But uh, you know, as I think about just the first Holy Communions that we had here um, last Sunday, and now tomorrow we'll have first Holy Communion at, at St. Michael in, in Hicksville. Many other parishes do it this time of year. That there, there's there's, there's something you know, truly more profound than just receiving a little wafer of bread or a sip of wine. You know, that as the church has taught throughout since the time of Jesus himself, that really and truly is the body and blood, soul and divinity of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And there's no other, other more profound way that Jesus um, comes to us and, and enters into us. So in this, as we seek to continue to have these sacred encounters with Jesus, as we hear them described in today's gospel, Peter and the other disciples are, are uh, that they're given another chance at fulfilling their mission of being fishers of men and of shepherding the people to a deeper faith in Jesus. Jesus invites every one of us to know that he truly has risen. He invites us to make him the Lord of our life so that he can lead us to know the great abundance of his blessings. Will we accept the invitation of Jesus? to be his disciple and follow him. We profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life for the world to come. Amen. Loving God, we live in the glory of the resurrection of Jesus, yet we experience many trials and sufferings. With firm trust in your eternal love, we offer our needs and our prayers. For Pope Francis and all who provide leadership in the church, May they give witness to their love for the Lord in ways that draw all people to Christ, the source of love and mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our president and all who serve in public office, especially local leaders, may they have the wisdom to deal with current issues, find ways to reach out to those in need, and promote love and care for all people. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For Christian people who at times struggle with their faith and perhaps even reject Jesus, may they know of the Lord's forgiveness and hear the call to be one of his disciples. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who joined the church at Easter and for students receiving their first Holy Communion, may they always turn to Jesus for nourishment and life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all students, teachers, and parents, as we approach the end of another school year, may all be granted grace to continue the important ta task of education, and may they celebrate many accomplishments. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters who cannot be with us today due to illness or other reasons, may God restore them in mind and body so they can be welcomed back to this Eucharistic community. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Randy Sweet, may we may May all who have died be found worthy to share eternal life with God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers written in the Paris Book of Intentions and our personal prayers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of glory and might, we praise you for your love and mercy which draws us all into your loving arms. We humbly ask that you hear and answer our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join the offertory hymn in the word and song, number 541, Shepherd of Souls, Refresh and Bless, number 541. Oh, 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful for his death is our ransom from death and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, Every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. font of all holiness, make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Oh, 
therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The communion hymn is in the word and song, number 494, at the Lamb's High Feast, number 494. Oh 
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so, so once again, just a reminder about the sheet here. So you can, um, I mean, really, we uh, always are looking for names. Those people who are submitted, those names are contacted to see if they're willing to um, be on a ballot, and then that will come out toward the end of May or early June to be able to um, cast your ballots on those to be elected to these positions at the parish. So please um, spend some time with that. You know, you can put yourself in there. Sometimes it's like, oh, I'd kind of like to get, you know, maybe I got some skill or talent in that area. So you can put yourself or maybe somebody in the parish that you think would be good at that. Sometimes we're kind of bashful or humble and we don't want to recognize that. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah. You know, somebody else can see that in them. So, um, so, so please, you know, fill in names, get that into us so we can move that process along. And then a reminder that um, with this being now the end of April, so now for May, the 4 o'clock Saturday Mass moves to St. Michael in Hicksville. And if you would, please remember the students from Hicksville tomorrow at the regular 1030 Mass, a first communion for them. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Amen. Thanks be to God. Holy Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do that you, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power thrust into hell, Satan and all the other evil spirits who wander through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Please join in the closing hymn and word and song, number 656, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light, number 656. Oh.